Next screen. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Now we get to the heartbeat of the message. We get to the meat of the sermon. We get to that important principle number three. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. How many of you know the Holy Spirit lives inside of you because when you accepted Jesus, he had to move in, right? The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. If you're led by the Spirit of God, the reason why you're led by the Spirit of God is because you're a son of God. God doesn't lead, lead slaves God leads sons. Please hear that statement again. God is not a slave owner. He is not in the business of leading slaves with chains around their necks. He is in the business of leading sons. And so if you're being led by the Spirit, you are not being slave-driven by the Spirit. So stop living like you're being slave-driven by the Holy Ghost. He is not a slave driver that is wearing you out and trying to kill you so you can go to heaven. He is leading you by the hand. He is walking with you. He is talking with you. He is treating you like a son. And if you don't yet feel like one, it's not because dad doesn't love you. It's because you have a slave mentality instead of a son's mentality. And I can't make you change that in five minutes or even maybe even five sermons. But if you'll continue to listen and believe that God loves you, you'll be able to divorce yourself from a slave mentality and walk into a sonship mentality. And that's the first day of the rest of your life. That's a promise. That's the first day of the rest of your life. If you're not there yet, no guilt and condemnation to you, but I want you to start to shake off the bands of mental slavery. You're not a slave. You're a son. Find the scriptures that give you that honor as a king. Uh, read them and reread them. Dwell on them in your spirit. Realize that the Holy Spirit is not on a sin hunt in your life. If he is, he has to ignore the fact that Jesus paid for all of them. And he has to act like Jesus paid for none of them. And then he has to make you pay for them. And a lot of Christians are in that mode because they see themselves as slaves. You are sons because you're led by the Spirit. Verse 15. For you did not receive. Here's what you didn't get. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again. Please underline the word again. Why does the Apostle Paul say again? Because before you met Jesus, you were in the spirit of bondage that caused you to live in fear all the time what bondage were you in this is where we mess this up a lot of christians will say i've heard this quoted by preachers that'll say you didn't receive the spirit of bondage again to fear before you met jesus you were in a bondage to the slave camp of sin that's not what that verse means this the apostle is not saying you were in bondage to sin you were in bondage to works that's the whole context of this whole book you were in bondage to works and that, why, that caused you to fear. Why did you fear? Because you could never work your way into daddy's favor and you always felt deficient. You never felt sufficient in the eyes of the father and so you were always scared to death that you weren't doing enough. And the apostle said you did not receive a spirit of bondage again. You had one before but you didn't receive it again. But you received the spirit of adoption, capital S. This is the Holy Ghost. You received the spirit of of adoption can you realize that through this text that you received him not you will receive him you received him you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out Abba that's Aramaic for daddy daddy father so don't be offended when we use the word daddy referring to God that's turned some people off um, because for, for a bunch of reasons but or for several reasons I don't I don't mean to offend you, but I have no problem referring to him as daddy because I feel like the Holy Spirit gives it sanction in the word that if you know you've been adopted into the family of God, feel free to call him daddy if he feels like daddy to you. Now, some people have a problem calling him daddy because they, they have father issues. I sat and counseled someone recently that said, I cringe when I hear you call God father. I said, why do you cringe? They said, because my dad walked out when I was three years old. I never saw him. To me, a dad is someone who abandons you. They said, when you call daddy, when you call God father, it, it turns my stomach. And I said, I apologize, it turns your stomach. But the issue there is not that I turn your stomach. The issue is that your dad does. And you've projected onto our heavenly father what you've seen out of your earthly father. And I said, our heavenly father can heal that in you. Because he loves you and he wants to shower you with his affection. And he's really, really patient. And he knows it might take the rest of your life, but if you'll let him, he'll show you what a father's like. And, and that might be someone here, and that might be for someone listening right now that really needed to hear that today or down the road whenever you're listening that has daddy issues. This is, sermon isn't about daddy issues, but it's a fitting moment to say to you that you have the right to call him father, even though some of you had terrible dads 
terrible fathers. And you've projected that every time you hear about your father in heaven. But I can tell you, he is superior in every way to our earthly fathers. I try to be a good dad to my kids, but I know the father is superior in every way to me as a dad. I know that. And I, know, and I, I want to project onto them who he is. So you have the right to call daddy father and father daddy. 16. The spirit himself, I love that, not itself. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Holy Ghost in you is always trying to get you to believe it. That's the best way I know to say it, even though it sounds real generic. But did you know the Holy Ghost in you is just trying to get you to believe it? What's he trying to get you to believe? You are one of the children of God. And we're going, I'm not one of the children of God. God, God wouldn't want one of his children to act like this. And we're fighting from the wrong side of this thing. And the Holy Spirit's going, no, 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 no. You're, you're establishing whether you're a child on how you act. I'm telling you, you are one of the children of God. And it's hard for us to grasp that, but the Holy Spirit is always witnessing to that thing. And here's why, 17. And if we're children, then we are joint heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him that we may also be glorified together. The suffering with Him is not you go out and die, but it's fellowshipping, as Paul said, fellowshipping in His sufferings. It's knowing why He died. You want to understand what it means to be a joint heir? Understand why Jesus died. And I just tried to tell you why he died. For the joy that was set before him. You know that? For the joy that was set before him is why he died. It wasn't just for sin. Thank God he died for our sin. But it was for the joy that was set before him. So if you can comprehend the joy that was set before him, you're going to walk into the joint heirship with Jesus. Now this joint heirship is yours. You get this simply because of who he is. Now what is it that you get? Now... Honestly, if we want to just be real slick and theological and super spiritual, we could stop right here and go, just being an heir with Jesus is enough. You can go home today and say, I get Jesus. And because I get Jesus, I've got enough. And you'd nod an amen and then not buy it. Because that's what we are. We go, man, I wanted more than that. I mean, I know I get Jesus, but what do I get? It says I'm a joint heir with Jesus. What does Jesus get? He gets me. Well, that's no good. I already got me. I want something more than me. Are we on the same page? Okay. He's my, I, I'm a joint heir with him. I get what he gets. He gets me. I don't want me. I want something else. Show me what I get. So the Apostle Paul knew we were going to have that issue. And so he wrote this. Read on. Next screen. Colossians 1 and 12. Give thanks to the Father. Is he your Father? It's the children of God. It all goes together, right? Give thanks to your Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. You know why you're qualified to be a partaker of the inheritance? Because you're a joint heir with Jesus. Because you've accepted Jesus the Holy Spirit's moved in, you're a joint heir. 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Guess what you get as a joint heir? Complete release from the control of the kingdom of darkness. Nobody in the world has that. You have that. Why? Because Jesus paid for it. The kingdom of darkness does not affect or control you. They do not judge you. They do not hold you. They do not dominate you. And they do not set your destiny. What do you get? You are an inheritor of the kingdom of the son of his love. So everything that's in Jesus, righteousness, peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost, the fullness of joy, all of the peace of heaven, that is your inheritance. It's not just money and cars and houses and all this stuff. We go, well, I'm joining with Jesus, I should have a yacht. Well, Jesus didn't have a yacht, so if you want to get real technical, he didn't have a place to lay his head. So be real careful about how you try to take the physicality of the joint heir of Jesus. Because you got so much more than that. Real, and if you don't think that's so much more, then I question whether you're living in the right dimension. Because there's so much more to life than what you have. You can have it all and have no joy and have no peace and have no rest and have nothing. But misery and heartache and a wasted life that ends too soon because you stressed yourself to death and your heart blew up inside your chest. And no one to love you and no one to hold on to and no way to sleep at night because there's no rest from the cares of this life. Or you can be set free from the chains of the darkness of this world and establish your righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So that no matter how much you have or how little you have, you still have Him and you never forget who you are in Christ and the fact that all of heaven belongs to you. That what He paid for is yours and that is wealth beyond measure. That is the joint heirs with Jesus that have the knowledge I am a son.